Hi guys, Todd here. Dying to show you this one for ages. Uh, yes, TG. Uh, this is -da, this is a box and a half. This is the Brass Monkey standard functions that was sent on to me by Beyond Vape. Uh, I've got to cut to the chase and just show you this. Look at that. This is a hundred and eighty-five dollars. It's a twenty-six six fifty mod. You get three tubes with this. Um, you get a dripper. You get a twenty-two millimeter top cap for it as well, and a drip tip. Uh, yeah, I've seen single tube mods priced more than this. And to get this in this presentation pack uh, and what you're getting, I believe is excellent value for money. But that's just my take on it. Uh, cut to the chase, we'll go down and we'll have a look at this. Now we're going to start off with uh, the tube. Uh, I make this to be 107 millimeters doink to doink and 30 millimeters in diameter. And you can see here, it's got your brass monkey on here and a little logo. And down the bottom here we have fabricated in Los Angeles. Brass monkey and serial number there as well. And yeah, it's quite a stiff button. It has to be said, it's a stiff button. Uh, locking ring. <laughs> it's just brilliant. I just love the travel in this locking ring, it just, and it never seems to bind either, which I find quite refreshing. Uh, top cap, we'll wipe this off just now. We've got silver plated brass contacts going on here. You know, you've got your usual affair, battery rattle, and adjustable 510 pin here. Not had a single issue with it works perfectly. Got vents going on here if you want airflow into the 510 and this is one solid chunk of metal this. I'll also point out that you do get you know top cap like this if you want to run your 22 millimeter devices. You will have to you know if you want to use this you do have to take the contacts out of here and transfer them to here. The switch itself unscrew like so. We've got another copper contact in there and we've got a insulator going on there. I'll just show you inside so we'll take out the contact here just unscrew that. I'm just holding the switch in place. Oops there we go. There she comes and we'll just drop this down And there we go. Ah, so <laughs> it's it's the magnet fight. Why am I always fighting with magnets? Look at the size of these bad boys. They are quite big magnets. And we've got this copper going on down here. It's quite strange the way they've got that plate there. Yeah, I don't think I've actually seen that before on a switch. You know that setup. There's that gap there. Uh, but obviously you're going to take your magnets spin them over so that they're repelling one another. I'm just going to drop that in there. Stick that on there like so. And this is where the fun begins. Drop that in there. That's me. And then pop the contact back on. And that's it for the switch. So they're quite strong magnets, so that is a stiff switch. Now we do have brass and copper tubes as well, which I have not used. I'm leaving them in the wrapping like this, and I'll pass this on to somebody. Uh, but uh, do you know the fact? Look at I mean, they still got the finish that they had coming straight out the factory. So popping a battery in. Just 
screw that down. Drop my 26650 in. And thread her up. And that's it. It's nice. It's very nice. Now we'll start off with uh, the Atti, uh, rebuildable dripping atomizer. Uh, I've got about a 5mm deep deck there. I think it was 5mm. And the holes in the posts here, terminals, are 1.7mm. Uh, which is not really an issue because you've got four of the little sods. The only thing I did notice is that when I got this out of the box, it was like this. I've not adjusted it. I've been able to vape with it no problem. Uh, but if I was being a bit pedantic, I would probably just loosen it off a little bit. Got a little brass contact there and just straighten that up. Flathead screws, which are also knurled if you want to get in there with your fingers, but uh, as always, screwdriver is a lot easier. You can run this in dual coil, single coil, or quad coil if you're feeling brave. The top cap, we've got a big dome going on here, and uh, you know, you've got your three cutouts here. So, primarily, you know, you'd be setting it up for single or dual coil. Airflow adjustment. So you can set it up, you know, if I wanted to do it single, I would just put the single hole here, like so. Dual coil, I would do it that way, and that way I've got two opposing holes going on there. Silent eye there, uh, I've got 7mm by 2mm in height, and it's a 30mm atty. So, I'll... I'll I'll do it in dual coil, so, you know, as I said, I want to use these two holes cut outs here and I'm just going to drop them right in like so. And, you know, I can adjust the airflow. And we've got the, the cooling fins at the top there. So I'll pop a, a build in here just now and uh, then we'll, I'll show you what it vapes like. Now this is uh, my, uh, once again, it's a, what did I find in the shed, floor build. And this is a pair of old shoelaces and some uh, wire, ribbon wire. I have no idea what size it is or anything. Yes, I know it's kind of embarrassing, but uh, let's have a look. Yeah, it seems to be vaping away there quite the thing. Uh, extremely easy to build on, very very easy to build on, uh, nice deep wells, zero issues, it's exactly as I would like a rebuildable dripper to be. Just going to line up my air holes with the coils here. Down she goes. It did come with this big chunky drip tip. How's that? That's that's just like a bit of industrial piping. Push that out. Which I've now dropped and TG will proceed to eat. Push that on. The size of it. And uh, make sure these are lined back up again. And on we go. Massive. So let's show you how this vapes. I'm just going to take this top cap off again and make sure I've got plenty of liquid in here. I am using a heavy VG goose juice at uh, 12 milligrams. I'm just going to load this up. Once again, there it is. It's, I'll tell you something, it's really heavy. Uh, I've had 26650 mods here that, uh, well, actually, just checked, loaded up battery everything on it that's 403 grams I mean that's you can feel the weight in it uh, we'll have a little vape or a little vape I'm full open on a dual coil build here that seriously blows some vapor out I can't taste a thing though can't taste a thing. <laughs> That's strange. Um, I 
That's terrible. It's absolutely terrible. It's, there's just far too much air for me there. Uh, what I'm going to do is take this chimney thing off and put a standard drip tip on. Now I've put a standard drip tip on and uh, I've, uh, they're about a, a third open the air holes now. better. Now it's strange because I, I mean, I, hand on hand, completely honest here, uh, I, I used to be of the opinion that you know massive air meant no flavour. Now I know for the Sean, the guy I work beside, he's a cloud chasing clone loving guy and uh, some of the juice he's brought in and I've tried his builds at really low resistances with loads of air, loads of flavour. So it kind of dispelled that whole myth for me. Uh, or whole belief that I had. Um, however, with this, I am finding fully open, I'm getting very little flavour from this, the build that I am running. So I'll, yeah, I'll give it another go. Uh, let's see, I've got the airflow quite tight. It's not, for me, it's not much of a flavor, it's not got bags of flavor. It just doesn't seem to have it at all. I mean, when you take the, the, the drip tip off and you look inside, you can see that the, the terminals are, they're not close to the, the top of the top cap. There's quite a, it's quite a big chamber. Uh, so that is probably going to be why I'm not getting the flavor that I would really like. On Christmas Day, if I woke up and I opened this box in the presentation case and everything, I would be doing backflips. I seriously love this for the money it is. I think it's great value. In my opinion, you can think what you want. Um, the, the mod itself is great. Uh, I love all the tubes with it and it's actually the, the button I really do like the button. It's a stiff button, do remember that. Uh, the locking ring is marvellous. Uh, I have no issue with the locking ring at all. Um, the, the etching, engraving and so on going on, it. I really like the look of it. The dripper itself, it's so easy to build on. Um, big wells, you got your vents, fins at the top, it's probably a copy of something else looking at it, but I don't know, they all look the same these days to me. Uh, it's got the logo on it as well. Uh, do you know what, it, it just, for me it's just that lack of flavour. But if you're into blowing clouds, No issue at all. I think it might be, I mean, goose juice is quite a subtle flavour. Um, and like I say, I like my flavour drippers. Um, uh, if you were, you know, if you were vaping something with a really strong distinctive flavour, I think you would get it through. But for me, unless I make this a really tight air hole, I, I'm not getting anything out of it flavour wise. It's a good vape. Ah, what a kit. You just wish the flavour was there for me. That's the only thing. It just If the flavour was there, then I would be drooling all over this. Um, but as it stands right now, it's just not working for me. Thank you to Beyond Vape for sending this on. I did get this free for review. Um, I don't think that any cloud chaser would be sorry with this. Um, if you are a vapor that likes you know, a subtle vape uh, flavor wise, not a strong overpowering flavor, then you may struggle with this. If you are into red stairs and things like that, you know, big strong flavor, then you'll get on fine with it. And that's it from me. 
guys as always take care and we'll catch up soon and if you're looking for another point of view on this uh, go and watch Ruby Roo's video she did a full review on this as well take care now bye